Hey everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. Today's card is a Valentine's card created using minimal supplies. Um, these would probably be things you could find in your craft room. And it's also a shaker card. So to begin for the supplies I used, I have a piece of cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. And then I have a background paper, a patterned loose leaf paper. And I have a sleeve protector from uh, Staples. And that's gonna be used for the shaker window. This is my A2 size folded card, and I'm going to cut this down to be a square card when I'm done. And then I have some sweet sequins and seed beads that I picked up at the dollar store, and I'm going to put these in the shaker. These are my circle die templates that I'm going to use to create my heart uh, window for the shaker. And then the stamp set I'm going to use is the Roses for You stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. I'm going to use the Love Sentiment out of the stamp. I have Versamark ink for embossing as well, and I'm going to use gold embossing powder for the sentiment. So to begin, I'm going to cut down my folded card. I have a bunch pre-folded um, because I normally use the same size, but because I want the square, I'm just going to trim that up so that all the edges are the same height. And then using my paper trimmer, I'm going to trim that down, and then I have my square card base to work, with, to work from. So to prepare this, I'm going to put my pattern paper down next, and that's going to be the background of my shaker window. So I'm going to come in with my tape roller, and I'm going to run along the outside edges and then an X down the middle, and this will be for the front of my card to stick the patterned paper onto the front. Now when I put this down, I'm going to leave a little bit of an edge. I'm not going to put it right up to the edge of the pattern paper. This way I can trim it with my ruler and exacto knife and get a very even edge to my card base so I don't have any overlapping overhanging or any of the pattern paper coming up short and so it makes it very easy to get a very perfect edge this way and so once this prep is done I'm going to move on to building the shaker card itself um, and I will be using foam tape as well. I didn't show that in the beginning, but that will be part of the shaker card. Now, when you're trimming this edge here, this is the folded edge, you wanna be careful that your knife doesn't cut that folded edge. So I usually um, lean my blade out towards the outside edge, or the outside of the edge. And then next I'm going to cut down my card stock here, this red card stock. This is a thicker card stock, but it will be the cover. And I want it to be the same size, so I'm just, roughly um, using this as a guide, using the card base as a guide to cut the square. I know that by doing this it will be at least bigger than my card base doing it that way. And so that should be good for the front. And so now that I have this trimmed up and it's measuring very close to the approximate size of my card, I'm going to work on creating the shaker window next. And so I want to create a heart. I don't have a die cut that is a heart, so I'm going to improvise with the circle templates that I do have. So I'm going to start by finding the center of my paper, and I'm using my ruler and finding the center and then marking up towards the middle, because I'm going to be cutting that part of it, so it doesn't matter that I'm writing on that center part. And so I want to make sure that I have a center line to use as my guideline for lining up my dies. So here you can see that I've drawn a line in the middle. And so now I want to find a circle that I can use for the top part of my heart that is big enough to create the window but not too big that it doesn't leave enough edge to um, hold the card intact so it doesn't get too flimsy on the edges. So I like the way that this circle is looking. And so I'm going to draw it matching to the left side, and then I'm going to pair that up on the right side. I want to make sure that the height of the circle is in the same position as it was on the left. So I'm going to come in with my ruler, and what I'm going to do is tuck this underneath and use this as a guide. So I'm lining the top part of the circle up with the bottom part of the ruler, just eyeballing it. And once I'm happy with where that is, I'll draw the circle on the other side as well. And so I'm going to take my time and run this through my Sizzix die cutting machine twice to cut out the circle on the top left and then the circle on the top right. I wanna make sure that they overlap in the middle so that I create that join like the top of a heart. And then when I'm done, I'll come in and cut the connecting lines that I'm drawing at the bottom. So here it is all cut out with my Sizzix. And so I have the two circles and then I should be able to easily join the bottom and make a heart. So I'm going to come in with my X-Acto knife and my ruler, 
and just lining up the edges just trimming that up and then I'll do the other side to match I want to make sure that I get as close to the circle edge as possible so it creates a nice seamless line from the circle down to the point of the heart And that side didn't cut quite enough, but it is a really thick cardstock. So my guide is still there from where I uh, did the knife cutting before. So I was able to easily go over that. And then I'm just going to trim up the edges where the lines join the end of the circle. There's just a tiny little tuft of paper on each side, a tuft, I guess. I'm just going to trim that up. And so this creates my heart window. And uh, here's a preview of what it's looking like. It's coming together pretty good. I'm really happy so far. So I'm going to create the window part. So I'm going to use a sleeve of a page protector from Staples. Uh, I'm going to trim up the edges first just so I have a single layer and then use that to create my window. So I'm just running my X-Acto knife along the edge. It's a little bit tricky here at the perforated edge where it's um, put together. And I had a little bit of trouble with that, but it didn't matter. I wasn't going to use this side of it because it has the hole punch anyways. So it was kind of the scrap edge. So I'm marking with my X-Acto knife the maximum size I need this window to be. I'm just going to roughly cut it out. Try to cut underneath of the X-Acto lines that I created. And so I know that at least if it's this size, it will be big enough to put in the window of my card shaker. And so I'm ready to put this down. I'm going to put this onto the red base with my tape roller as well. My tape roller's got really sticky tape. I love uh, this one. It's from 3M. I'll put a link in the description below. And so it's really good to use um, for this window because I know it's not going to shift around or come loose. And I've rimmed the edge. And then I'm going to go around the part as well, the bottom part of the heart and around the top corner curves. I want a really snug fit and I don't want any gaps in the window um, or any air pockets. So I've put a lot of tape on the red and then I'm just going to overlay this gently and make sure it's nice and flat. There's no um, puckering. Now on the one side it did hang over a little bit too long. So that's super simple. I just took my X-Acto knife and my ruler and trimmed it up and so it's flush to the edge now. So now I'm going to create the space for the sequins and the beads, the seed beads to go into to create that shaker window. So I want to use foam tape and I'm going to double layer this foam tape. I want to rim the edge of the window as close as possible because I don't want any beads or sequins falling into underneath the red part of the card window where people can't see them. So I want to make sure that that foam tape is as close to the window edge as possible to keep all of those sequins towards the window and towards the middle of the card. So I've cut the length I need and then I cut it in half and then just doubled that tape. And so this creates the space for those sequins to move around. And then you can see I'm rimming it very closely to the edge as closely as possible. And here's my finished card. I made sure I went all the way around the heart and then some supporting um, foam pieces around the outer edge of the red card. Before I put the sequins in, I'm going to come in with my kitchen flower and my mop brush just to go around the edges of the foam tape to make sure that nothing's sticky. I don't want any seed beads getting stuck on the edge and not flowing freely in that window. And so now the fun part, I'm just going to dump in my seed beads and some sequins that I think will look nice with my background and my card. Just picking at random. And so I'm keeping my selection more to the pink side because I have the pink in my pattern background. I think that'll pull in nicely. I'm tempted to put in some purple too, but they're a little bit dark and they don't really uh, complement anything really that's going on in my card. And so I'm just going to put some light pinks and then my seed bead mixture, which is more on the pink side as well. And now that I have everything in there, I'm going to peel the backing off my foam tape and very carefully um, put my base onto my shaker part, making sure that I have my card opening the correct way when I put it down. And so I've lined up the edges as best as possible. 
And so when I flip it over, I'm just gonna push it into place and then my shaker window is built. So that's super easy. And so the next part is gonna be putting on the sentiment and decorating the card. Now, when I started this card, I didn't plan on doing the decorations on the red part that I ended up doing. This kind of morphed out of another idea, but I'm really excited with the way it came out. It was kind of a surprise as I went along. So what I ended up doing or deciding upon was doing the sentiment on a piece of vellum paper. And so my thought was when you hold the shaker card up, all the seed beads fall to the bottom and the sequins fall to the bottom and that upper space of the heart was kind of empty. And so I thought that would be a good place to nestle the sentiment. And so I'm gonna do some gold embossing here onto the vellum. I think it's really pretty and a nice compliment to the warm pink tones in the red. And so I've used my Versamark ink to put that stamp down and then I'm just brushing it in with some, or laying over some gold embossing powder onto it. And then I'll take this off camera and run it under my heat tool. And so to complement the gold embossing, I'm gonna use a gold Sharpie to decorate the red part of my card. And so at first I want to create a frame for my window. I have that cut heart. And so I'm just going along the edges with a gold Sharpie and just rimming the edge with a gold outline. And so this should complement the sentiment well and bring all those colors together. So once I did this, I felt that, of course, it was still kind of empty. I wanted to add more decoration. And so I decided to come in with some embellishments that I drew with the gold Sharpie. I was just kind of feeling it out, feeling it out as I went. And I decided to do an art deco theme. I'm just really in love with this art style right now. And it, it is very popular. And I just think it's so cool. And it kind of reminds me of the Empire State Building because it's all art deco style. And I just, I love that, that, um, artistic time period. So I had a lot of fun decorating the front. And as I went along, I just kind of looked at where I felt that there was empty spots in the card and where I could add balance visually with some graphical images. So I'm just doing some very straight lines. Um, Art Deco is very even lined and uh, parallel, uh, symmetrical, I guess. And, and it's just, just so pretty. I thought it was really nice. So I had a lot of fun doing it in gold as well. So here I'm just kind of deciding about where the sentiment should go. And when I hold the card up, I find that all the seed beads run to the bottom. So I felt more comfortable putting the sentiment at the top part of the heart, which meant that the bottom part of the card was still kind of empty. And so I wanted to embellish the bottom area as well. And it was a little bit bigger of a space because it's the lower part of the heart. And so I had a bit more to fill in there, but I didn't want to make it too busy. So I just carefully did some border lines as well and tried to mimic the same style that I had done at the top with the sun rays coming out of the corners. And so I thought with these lines all pushing towards the center, it really brought the focal point into where the sentiment would sit in the middle of the card and it all worked out really well. Uh, in that regard. So now I have the sentiment ready and I'm going to trim it down to fit in that space. I want it to just nestle at the top part of the heart on the widest edges. And so I'm trying to fit it into the window. And if I hadn't known I wanted to put it here, I would have added that first, but it was kind of an afterthought. So I had to make it uh, tuck in there good, but enough that it wouldn't fall out. So I'm just testing it and it's still a little big, so I'm going to trim the corners. Um, because the foam tape goes around the heart, it's obviously got a curved edge and I need to curve the edge of my vellum as well to fit. And so once I have those corners clipped, I found that it was sitting really well and I was happy with that position. So I wanted to tack that into place. So what I decided to do was come in with some craft glue and just run a, a small bead of it on a scrap piece of paper and put just enough to get the edges um, filled with craft glue, enough that I could tuck it under that window but it wouldn't smear all over the window or come out on top on the red part of the cardstock. 
and so I just needed a touch to keep it in place. And this craft glue that I'm using, it's uh, Craft Bond by Elmer's, it's, and it's a really good glue. It's, it feels almost like it's a little bit stickier than a white glue. It has a little bit of a better adhesion. And so I have that in place and I'm really happy with that position and glad that it fit in there okay because I didn't have a lot of room to work with but it did end up being okay. And so here's the finished card. I had so much fun creating this one. It was just kind of something that evolved on its own and was made with minimal supplies which was really nice to use up just some different things in my craft room and create kind of a different looking card. So I hope you guys enjoyed this card and this video. Here's another look at the final product that I'm really proud of. And I love the Art Deco style. I can't get enough of it. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you're notified as I post more videos. Thank you so much for watching.